Hey guys, it's been a while since I made a video like this since the return of Let's Plays on my channel has been taking up quite a bit of my time. But I'm going to try and get more content like this pumped out to you guys as long as you enjoy it. Today though I wanted to just sit down and talk with you guys about some of the Pokemon facts that sort of surprised me when I first heard them. I didn't know exactly how to approach making this video, it doesn't really have a set topic. Just me talking about some stuff from Pokemon that isn't commonly known. I'll mainly be focusing on the video games because that's all I really know much about. But if you enjoy this video or if you learn something new, don't forget to leave a like and perhaps share some of the facts from Pokemon you found to be surprising in the comments down below. Okay, so I'm going to start off a little basic. Fact number one is that Garchomp can't learn Earthquake by level up. Yeah, he's still able to learn the move through TM, but the idea of Wooper naturally learning to cause earthquakes while this 6 foot 3 ground dragon type has to be taught annoys me even to this day. And while doing research on this subject, I find out that Go Goat can actually learn it naturally too. A fucking goat naturally learns how to cause earthquakes? I need to sit down. I, well, I am because I'm sitting down while I'm recording audio for this. Shut up. Fact number two is that Clamprol has the highest special attack in the game. You all thought Mega Mewtwo Y had the highest special attack? If you give it the Deep Sea Tooth as a held item, it doubles the special attack of Clam Pearl. At level 100, modest nature, perfect IVs, and 252 EVs put to special attack, Clam Pearl's special attack is 271. If we times that by 2, we get 542. Mewtwo Y on the other hand, with a modest nature, perfect IVs, 252 EVs put into special attack, comes up to 535. I'm by no means trying to say that Clamprol is a better Pokemon than Mega Mewtwo Y, but it's crazy how one held item can make that much of a difference. Fact number three is that Rhyhorn, Rhydon, and Rhyferior can't learn Head Smash. Rhyhorn and its evolutions can't learn Head Smash. It should be able to for obvious reasons. It's a Rhino. Running into stuff and smashing them is sort of their thing. As well as it fits perfectly with two of Rhyhorn and Rhydon's abilities and one of Rhyferior's, Rockhead and Reckless. If you didn't know, Head Smash is a powerful physical rock type attack that has 50% recoil. In other words, if the attack does 100 HP damage to the opponent, the user will lose 50 HP. The ability Rock Head, which Rhyhorn and Rhydon can get, protects the Pokemon from recoil damage. So that 50 HP Rhyhorn or Rhydon would usually lose is no longer a problem because Rock Head protects them from it. Reckless on the other hand powers up moves that have recoil damage. Rhyhorn, Rhydon and even Rhyferior gets this ability. I don't mean to make a big deal out of it, it just doesn't make sense and I was shocked when I found out I couldn't learn it. When I think of the move Head Smash, my mind immediately wanders to these three. The only reason I believe that they wouldn't give them this move is because they're worried it would make them too overpowered. I'm not sure about all that, it would definitely improve them though. Which, in my opinion, they are in need of a bit of improvement. They aren't the fastest Pokemon in the world, so most of the time they're required to take a hit before dealing out damage. Don't worry though guys, they can learn... Horn attack, and iron head, and headbutt, yeah. Fact number four is that Shroomish and Wooper can punch. Shroomish and Wooper are able to learn punching moves despite not having any hands. Shroomish can learn focus punch, drain punch, and wake up slap, while Wooper can learn ice punch and dynamic punch. You could say it's weird for Ghastly to learn the elemental punches too, but think about it. He's a ghost. I'm sure he's capable of forming hands and using them to punch. Fact number 5 is that Toxic never misses when a poison type uses it. It hits through Dig, Fly, Phantom Force, etc. The only thing that can stop Toxic landing if a poison type uses it is if you are using a protecting move such as Protect or Detect, or if you're immune to it by being a Steel type or a Poison type. Fact number 6 is that Algem and Beehim can learn Steel Wing despite not having wings. This is only obtainable from Pokebank because in Generation 5 they could learn TM51 Ally Switch, which was improperly transferred to Generation 6 where TM51 is Steel Wing. There's a theory out there though that this was done on purpose in reference to Area 51 because they're aliens. I guess we'll see if it's true in Generation 7 if they can learn whatever TM51 ends up being. I hope it's some weird move that they shouldn't be able to learn like Iron Tail or something. For fact number 7 I have a few weird Generation 1 facts. In Generation 1, Tangela couldn't learn Vine Whip, and Lickitung couldn't learn Lick. I just want to know what was going through the developers' heads. Something else that's weird is that in Generation 1, Voltorb and Electrode couldn't learn any Electric-type moves by level up. This also happened in Generation 2. If you wanted them to have an Electric-type move, you had to teach it to them through TM or Move Tutor. For fact number 8, we're going to talk about some Pokemon cries. A couple of cries from the older generation of Pokemon were used more than once. 
just altered to sound a bit different. A few were even identical. That's why they most likely changed a lot of the cries in Generation 6, just so they sounded different and they were all unique. The most noticeable ones in my opinion are Charizard and Rhyhorn, Caterpie and Goldeen, and Machop and Omanyte. But I'll leave a link in the description to a video that shows off a whole lot more. It's definitely worth checking out. After this video though. Don't leave me. Fact number 9 is that Oddish has a higher attack stat than Onyx. I was genuinely flabbergasted when I discovered this 1 foot 8 tall plant with eyes was capable of hitting harder physically than a 28 foot 10 rock snake. I know size isn't everything, but really? Another comparison that can be made like this is Registeel and Snubble. I actually saw this image on Twitter the other day and it amused me, so why not share it with you guys? It reads, This two foot tall pink dog in a dress throws a harder punch than a six foot plus mythical golem made completely out of metal. At this point, I ask myself why I bother questioning Pokemon. I do quite enjoy these stat comparisons though, so if you have any more weird ones, feel free to share them in the comments. And lastly, number 10, there are four Pokemon with palindromic names. If you're unaware what palindrome is, it's a word, phrase, number, or other sequence of characters which reads the same forwards as backwards. There are currently only four Pokemon with palindromic names. Eevee, Olomol, I still don't know how to say that thing's name. It's, it's on screen for you. Ho-Oh, and Giraffe Rig. Eevee and Ho-Oh are the more obvious ones. The reason I remember Olomola is because of its palindromic name, but Giraffe Rig is the most interesting one. It's speculated that its name came from the original design where it had two identical heads facing opposite directions of its body. So, the giraffe version of Cat Dog. To be quite honest, I prefer this design and I think a lot of people agree with me when I say that Giraffe Rig should have a mega evolution and get its original design back, with some improvements here and there. But that's for another video. Anyways guys, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching whatever this is. I don't quite know really. I just felt like sharing some weird facts from Pokemon I knew, and if you learned something, be sure to leave a like on the video, and uh, maybe share it with some of your friends. Thanks a lot.